Um, in your investigations and through your research, uh, I know you say you don't normally give comments on certain things, but what would you perceive or have you come across anything to do with a potential Project Bluebeam scenario where the government use a, a fake alien invasion to coerce us into a one world government sort of thing? Yeah, I, I've, I've studied Bluebeam. Uh, the history of Bluebeam seems to derive from a gentleman who's now deceased named Serge Monas, who's a French Canadian. Uh, Last October, uh, in the run-up, I think, to up, up before October 13th, there was another Blue Beam uh, rumor that was making the rounds of the Internet. And, in fact, it was said that October 13th was supposed to be a Blue Beam event day that was going to happen in which either a fake alien invasion or some kind of global religious event that was going to be engineered by the elites through holographic technology uh, to create a kind of global police state. I was very skeptical in the lead up to that. In fact, I wrote an article before it saying it's not going to happen. The reason that I feel it wasn't going to happen is that when I looked into Monast himself, I became very skeptical that he had any genuine information whatsoever. Uh, and he seems to have originated this concept. Um, what he said at the time in the 90s was that uh, his source in NASA uh, – now, I have to ask myself, how does a French-Canadian who never left his – geographic proximity is area ever, to my knowledge, get to be tight with some guy at NASA. But the NASA guy supposedly said to him, yeah, we're working on this thing and we're going to create this uh, technology to uh, create fake earthquakes to open up archaeological sites in the Middle East that are going to disprove the Bible, whatever that means. Think about that. What does that mean exactly? Um, we're going to uh, undermine Christianity. Monas was a very strong, devout Christian, apparently. Um, and do all of these things to create a new world order. All right. Well, and his belief was that it, would, it was going to happen, um, you know, before 2000. Now, he died in 1996, I believe. But it didn't happen, obviously. So the blue beam concept now has been taken by other people and said, you know, to be the fake alien invasion. Here are my two problems with it. I'm, I'm certainly not saying that there are no false flags. I believe 9-11 was a false flag. I believe that to the day I die. And I do believe that uh, the powers that be the secret cabal, and there are such groups, do create uh, fake uh, crises to, to get people to do what they want. So that, that I have no problem with any of that happening. Bluebeam, I'm skeptical about. Um, the logistics. How do you create a fake alien invasion, really, and make it credible, not just to the people, but you've got a global scientific community. Keep in mind, they're not just skeptical about aliens and UFOs. They're overtly hostile. And unless you have a way to shut every one of them up and prevent them uh, from expressing a lifetime worth of opinions on this, you're going to have your work cut out for you. It's not just like a, a simple walk in the park. Oh, yeah, we'll create a blue beam scenario, scare the shit out of people, and make them uh, submit to our fascist state. I, I just see that as a very tall order. And then the technology involved globally to do that, to really, really to convince people. I see that as, as difficult, very difficult. And if I were the guy trying to organize this, I would be beside myself with logistical nightmarish issues. How do you really do it? Now... Having said that, I will leave open the possibility, because I do think that there are advanced technologies that are covertly concealed and, and, and employed by, by clandestine groups. I, I've argued, for example, for the existence of what I call a breakaway civilization, a group that's moved vastly ahead of the rest of us in terms of technology and science and cosmology even. And and they might conceivably have the ability and desire to do this. But again, it comes down to where is the evidence, all right? It's one thing to, to talk about these, but then it's another to examine the evidence and find out how plausible is this really and what is it based on. And I just have not seen, when I look at the history of Monas, I just am not seeing anything that's credible for me. Um, Ms. Fields, I quite agree with you on the whole blue beam thing. I, I also, I also mm. thought it was just an extrapolation of what we've already been taught, um, just to scare people. To be perfectly right. honest. And, and one thing I don't like these days is fear mongering. There's a, there's a lot to be afraid of. That's legitimate. Um, what I, I've 
I feel like I have a lot of um, individuals who, for better or for worse, will look to me to provide an opinion on some of these things, and it's kind of... Um, but you're on a pedestal that you don't want to be well, on. Well, it does, right, and, and I didn't yeah. get into this field in order to get to that position. I really didn't, and when you find, though, that statements you make have an effect on other people, and you, you take it much more seriously. And and um, I, I personally have a philosophy of, of being as fearless as I can possibly be in confronting the future. But also, that means to be as clear-headed as I can be. And what I don't ever want to do is is engage in uh, in spreading fear based on something that I can't myself find as solid evidence for. I'll never want to do that. Well, it's very ethical. It's good that people know that, especially if they're going to take on your material, they know where it's coming from. That, and thank you. And that is why I, I, I sometimes am slow, not fast, to react to new events. But I'm very happy with that. Um, I don't. I don't think it's a smart uh, philosophy in anyone's life to react immediately to events around you. I think all of us need time sometimes to, to sit and to think. And it's harder in our age today.